How is the geometry classroom a lot like the United Nations? They both have a lot of rulers. Get it. Anyways, uh, we are going to be talking about rules, hence my ruler joke, when we are using deductive reasoning. So this first part we're going to talk about direct reasoning. Now, deductive reasoning, if you want to prove a conjecture true, you must use deductive reasoning. Remember before when we used inductive, we kind of said, well, so far based on the pattern, but if you can find a counterexample, you can prove me wrong. Well, deductive reasoning doesn't use a pattern. It basically uses facts, definitions, and properties and says, well, this rule says this. So when you put these rules together, that means that. That is deductive. So inductive starts with observation or experiment and says, oh, I keep seeing this pattern. And it comes up with a theory. Deductive takes the theories or the principles, the ones that are proven true, and makes predictions from those. So you are expected to determine if an argument is based on inductive or deductive reasoning. Remember that inductive reasoning is based on observation and can be disproved with just one counterexample. So we're going to determine if the following argument is based on inductive or deductive reasoning. There is a myth that you can balance an egg on its end only on the spring equinox, and I know I've seen this on news reports. A person was able to balance an egg on July 8th, September 21st, and December 19th. Therefore, this myth is false. So the person proved the myth false by using either inductive or deductive reasoning. Well, what did they do? They did observation. They looked at an egg on, someone was able to do it on July 8th, September 21st, and December 19th. I can assure you that the spring equinox is not in December. That's winter. And it's uh, July is definitely the summer. So these are not the spring equinox. Uh, so these are counterexamples. And this is proven false through counterexample, and it's inductive reasoning. In this next example, we're looking at a myth that the Great Wall of China is the only man-made object visible from the moon. So they said, OK, here's some facts. The Great Wall is barely visible in photographs taken from 180 miles above the Earth. The moon is about 237,000 miles from the Earth. Therefore, the myth cannot be correct. So they're saying if it's barely visible at 180,000 mi 180 miles and you go 1,000 times further, there's no way for this to be true. Now, they didn't use observation. They didn't go to the moon. They used the facts that they already had from the photographs, okay? And those are fact. So this is deductive reasoning. This is proving, proven false using facts and rules. Now, deductive reasoning, one of the most common types of arguments, is direct reasoning. If I tell you if P then Q is a true statement and P is true, then Q must be true. My favorite way of saying this for my students is by direct reasoning. If I am standing in P, then I have to be in Q. That is direct reasoning. If this is a true statement where P is definitely inside of Q. Now, going the other way, if I'm standing in Q, do I really have to stand in P? I think I would avoid it if I could. So that would not, giving me the conclusion doesn't prove that something is true. So here's our example. Determine if the conjecture is valid and given. By the way, anything that is given is assumed to be true. And this, you'll see this a lot in your proofs. We'll give you some givens. Anything we give you as a given is automatically true. So we say, if all sides of a quadrilateral congruent, then the polygon is a rhombus. So this statement is given as true. And actually, it is true. If all sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then it is a rhombus. Now, here's the extra thing that's given to you is true. All sides of quadrilateral A, B, C, D are congruent. The conjecture is, or the conclusion, is that quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a rhombus. Is this a valid argument? Well, we're given the statement, and here's the statement that's true, and I'm identifying the hypothesis. 
all sides of a quadrilateral are congruent. There's a conclusion. The polygon is a rhombus. And which part did they say is true? They told me the hypothesis is true. Well, that's if P, then Q. If I'm standing in P, then I have to be in Q. If P is true, Q is true. So this is a valid argument. P is given as true, so Q must be true. So for further reflection, how can you tell the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning? Inductive is based on observation. You prove something uh, false through counterexample. Deductive, you prove things true or false by using the rules and the logic. If the conclusion is true, does that mean that the hypothesis must be true? Remember again our direct reasoning rule. If I'm standing in P, I do have to stand in Q. So if P is true, then Q is true. But if I'm standing in Q, I don't have to stand in P. And like I said, I'll try to avoid